Hey everyone, today I'm going to do a stock analysis for Cisco and see whether its stock is a good buy or not. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan. We do a lot of stock analysis on this channel. So if you're into that kind of thing, please hit that subscribe button so you can check out more stock analysis videos. Okay, so one of the reasons I was interested in Cisco was that it has not performed well year to date. It's down close to 15% in contrast to a lot of the other tech giant companies, which are up tremendously year to date. Another thing I noticed is they had a very nice dividend yield, close to 3.5%. The price earnings ratio is just about 13. Uh, these both are very attractive relative to other companies in the S&P 500. So I thought I'd have a look. Okay, so never buy anything you don't understand. Let's just have a look at what Cisco does here. They are a tech company, but they're just in a variety of areas here. Network, wireless, they got data center. They certainly have video if you use Cisco WebEx before. So here we have financial information for Cisco's latest fiscal year, which ended on July 25th, 2020. You can see they make most of their revenue from in infrastructure platforms. The remainder comes from a combination of these other areas. One of the major areas is services with about $13 billion of revenue or 27%. Then you have apps accounting for about $5.6 billion or 11%. And you've got security coming in at $3 billion or about 6% and other. We can also disaggregate Cisco's revenue by geographic region. If we do so, we see that the Americas account for about 59% of total revenues. The other revenues come from Europe, Middle East, and Africa, which combined is about 26%, and the remainder of 15% comes from Asian Pacific countries. Okay, so right off the bat, one thing I love about Cisco is their diversification in terms of all the different products they offer and geographic regions, gives you protection against changes in local markets, and gives you currency diversification as we may face a devaluing dollar coming soon. So this is definitely something to pay attention to and consider as we consider Cisco's risk level. Now, speaking of risk level, here's the balance sheet for Cisco where I do some financial ratios. Liabilities to assets is 60%. Uh, now that's, that's not low, but it's not very high at all. Pretty comfortable with that debt level. They have positive working capital. Their current ratio is 1.72 and their quick ratio is 1.67 both of which are very healthy. Anything above one is really fine with me. So when I see levels this high, uh, very happy to see that. They're in no short-term danger. All right, so here we have some dividend growth rate data for Cisco. Over the last five years, their cumulative annual growth rate for their dividend has been 13.27%, which is very impressive. So if you invested in Cisco today and you didn't touch the stock for 10 years, and they had the same growth rate. What you would have, what would happen is that instead of receiving the dollar and forty-four cent dividend per share that they're paying right now, that would grow to be five dollars a share, and it would be about a twelve point two percent yield on your cost. So not only does Cisco currently pay a pretty healthy dividend, but it has a lot of potential to grow. So here I'm looking at income statements for Cisco for the past five years. Luckily, Cisco's fiscal year ends on July 25th, 2020, so we don't really need to do a trailing 12 months thing here for 2020. What I'm leaving out here is the first quarter of their next year. They recently reported that, and their earnings for that quarter were about in line with what they normally are, so really no change here. And as I look across here, I really see no change. Cisco's revenue is really steady. I'd like to see it grow more, but you know, at least it's not falling. Uh, the gross profit is about the same, and you can see a pretty consistent net income. Here's a vertical analysis. So we've taken each income statement number and divided it by the revenue for that income statement. So what we see here is that gross profit is always, always about 62 or 63% of revenues. Very healthy uh, gross profit margin there. I'd like to see that. SG&A expenses and R&D expenses are very consistent as a portion of revenue. And in the end, the profit margin here ends up being about 21 or 22 percent pretty consistently. Okay, so to have a closer look at Cisco, I'm going to do a DuPont analysis. 
If you haven't seen my video on that, check it out in the description below. But essentially, we're taking return on equity, one of the most important measures of profitability, and we're just breaking it down into three components. Now, in the previous segment, I touched on net income margin. They have good margins. I like their margins. What I don't like is the asset turnover. In the most recent year, it is 0.5, which, you know, it's good that it's trending upward. I like that, but it's still not very high. That means for every dollar of assets they have in place, they generate about 50 cents in sales. Not so efficient. Then you have the equity multiplier to capture the effects of leverage. I would like to see them get a bit more leverage, to be honest. They're not very leveraged right now. They have very stable income. They could, they could afford to borrow a little more and perhaps use the money to buy back some of their own stock. But anyhow, when you combine the three components, you end up with a return on equity of about 33% the most recent year. I love to see that. That is trending upward, and that's a great result. All right, so to value the company, what I'm going to do is use an intrinsic valuation model. Specifically, I'm going to use the free cash flow to equity model. Check out my video in the description below if you don't know how this works. But to be brief here, the idea is the value of a company is just the sum of all the cash flows that you're going to receive for owning that company. And we use the free cash flow to equity as our form of cash flow. Now, we're going to have to discount all these cash flows back because money received further out in the future is worth less and less. Uh, you can write the thing shorthand like so. Now, to actually apply it in practice, we're going to have to, you know, make some assumptions here because... The reality is there's no way we could forecast all of the cash flows of Cisco from now until the end of their life. That's impossible. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to forecast the next five years of cash flows. And even to do that, our method is going to be rather simple. We're going to look at the, ca the cash flows of the past couple of years. We're going to form an estimate of next period's free cash flows. And then we're going to assume some kind of abnormal growth rate and say, okay, the next five years, uh, for example, I'm going to use about 6%. That is the forecast on SeekingAlpha.com. And I'm just going to assume that free cash flow to equity in the next year will then grow by 6% every year for the next five years. Afterward, to capture the rest of the value of the company, we got this terminal value. And it's calculated like so, as you can see here near the bottom of the screen. We need some sort of long-term growth rate for the terminal value. That's pretty easy, just gonna use two and a half percent, assuming we just keep up with inflation, population growth, etc., and the discount rate. And I'll choose kind of a lower discount rate for Cisco given their stability. All right, so here's the results of doing that analysis. You can see I have a valuation matrix, not just one value, because the estimated growth rate and discount rate are just estimates, and we wanna see how sensitive that value is to changing estimates. Again, I think a lower discount rate is appropriate for Cisco, given their diversification and stable business. I, I could go anywhere from 5 to 8%. I'm going to say about 6 is where I would put it on. But again, I want to show you guys the values for all of them. And the free cash flow from equity growth rate. Again, the net income growth rate is forecasted to be about 6%. But I want to go from anywhere from 4 to 7, just see how things vary. What we see here is incredible, guys. Under any assumption, Cisco would be undervalued right now. It could be undervalued by a lot if you go on the most optimistic assumptions here. High growth rate, low discount rate. But no matter how you slice it, Cisco looks to be undervalued. Just how undervalued is it? Well, if we look down below here in this other matrix, uh, we see here that it can be from anywhere from 72% undervalued to just you know about 29% undervalued. This is pretty incredible. Here we see Cisco's dividends versus stock buybacks. Again, you got that incredible dividend growth going on in the orange there. In addition to that, you have quite some stock buybacks. What I'd love to see is that the company's bought back quite a lot of its own stock in the past two years, which would suggest that it's undervalued. Now, are these buybacks going to be able to continue at the rate they have been? Well, no way. Here we're looking at Cisco's payout and their modified payout ratios. So in the green, we've got payout ratios. That's just the total dividends they gave to shareholders divided by the profits for the year or net income. So you can see Cisco takes all the money they make and they pay out about, I don't know, between 40 and 50% as dividends. 
pretty healthy payout ratio. They, they got a lot of money left over after that to reinvest or, or buy back stock. That is very sustainable. Now, will they continue buying their shares back at this incredible clip? No way. Because you look at the past two years, their payout ratio is exceeding their net income. You know, you got payout ratios of just about 200, 230%. So that means they probably had to take on more debt to do that. That's not going to continue. But that's really okay. We're really relying on the company's profits and their dividends rather than just share buybacks to continue with that clip. One last piece of information I love to look at is insider trading activity. You know the board of directors and the top executives know a lot more about the company's prospects than we do on the outside no matter how good of research we do. And you can see here that in the past three months, we got some buys, we have some sells. Uh, let's look at the number of shares involved here. What you actually see here is net buying activity by insiders in the past three months. Uh, it's not overwhelming, but it's pretty good here. About 1.7 million shares bought, about 1 million shares sold. So, you know, on the whole, some positive news there. Okay, so what we have here is a company so incredibly undervalued. I'm getting suspicious. So one thing I, I did here, I'm going to change the free cash flow to equity growth rate to 0%. I'm going to increase the discount rate from anywhere from 6 to 9%. And we get a whole new set of intrinsic values. And what we see here is the company is still undervalued, even if their free cash flow from equity grows at 0% from here on out. Okay, guys, so here are my closing thoughts. Um, First, hit that like button. That's the first thing you want to do. But seriously, okay, probably buy some Cisco stock. I mean, it looks to be pretty undervalued. And if people don't appreciate that stock, then, well, you get a 3.5% dividend yield while you hold on to it and wait for people to appreciate it. So you're going to be getting paid even if nobody wants it. And it's very well diversified in terms of their product mix. Uh, Currency-wise, geographically, it's very diversified. Uh, so I really like Cisco stock. They're very profitable and they look to be a good deal even under pessimistic growth assumptions. So yeah, go ahead and buy that stock. Uh, that's just my thoughts. Uh, again, hit that like button if you liked it. Thank you for watching.